Okay, here I'm actually boiling water with the Ainsley load. You can see it boiling. That's the outer water jacket there. This is uh, the Ainsley load inside a test tube. The test tube is filled with oil. The oil comes up to that upper level. Then that whole test tube is in a jacket with water in it. That's the water level right there. And you can see that it is uh, actually boiling the water. And we're running at about a 70%, 60 to 70% duty cycle coming from the pulse generator at uh, that frequency and uh, monitoring the usual points, the Ainsley point B, the current on, off, on, off, uh, on, off, on, off, and then the spikes there. Uh, and uh, that's what the flucoscope shows. It's the same, the same signal, except you can see that it's, uh, I've hit the auto button, right? And the flucoscope is showing, it defaulted to uh, uh, DC coupling 10 volts per division on the A trace. So this is the A trace up here with this being its zero line. So 10, 20, 4, that's the battery voltage, and then there are the spikes as the MOSFET turns on and off. This is the B trace across the current viewing shunt, 200 millivolts per division, so 2, 4, uh, 600 millivolts, on, off, on, off, like that, okay? So, I don't know what the big deal is about the flucoscope. It does pretty well. Of course, uh, if you ask it to display the wrong information, you'll get the wrong information. And if you... Uh, do weird stuff like play with the uh, seconds per division and you know see there you got uh, moiré uh, patterns going across there that are caused by the uh, interaction between the scopes display and the digital sampling rate uh, that's called aliasing and uh, there's all kinds of things that you have to watch for the variations in the height of these spikes down here see how some of them are going like as far down as my finger occasionally but many times they don't that's also a sampling effect uh, the spikes are not really varying that much the true signal rather is not really varying that much the same with the thickness of those traces some of them are only one pixel wide some of them go to three pixels wide that's not varying actually okay and uh, let's go to some re re really better display here. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm changing the time base progressively so that we're seeing more and more details in the features. And you can see there's actually very little spikiness going on. If I switch to uh, the other MOSFET, that's the 2SK1548. Gives you a lot more spikes and higher voltages. We can expand that too. See there. Now with this, you can really see the effect of that, that diode. That's uh, MUR 1100E, that's no diode, that's the 100, or uh, 1N4007. Anyway, you can do a lot with the Fluke, but it's actually not the best oscilloscope to use uh, for this kind of work. It has too many artifacts and uh, it's too difficult to use and its response rate is just too slow. I mean you push a button and you have to wait several seconds before something happens and then you see these spikes varying in height the way they do. Uh, it's just, you know, over here we're rock solid and this is a much more true display of what's going on than, than uh, this is. And. Uh, Looks like we're still boiling water.
to the RFPG50. That works a little bit better. Okay, thanks a lot.